To the west of Athens, between the Gulf of Corinth and the Aegean Sea, there is a majestic passage, the Corinth Canal, which allows ships to sail from one sea to another. Hello, Costas. Hello, boss. What are we expecting today? There's a big cruise ship, the Solial, which is due around 7 p.m. The Solial, which is arriving from Corinth and is heading for the island of Delos. Is it big? Yes, it's 20 meters wide with a draft of 5 meters. It's a very difficult passage. There's nowhere harder in the rest of the world. No, there's nowhere harder. Anastasios Filis is a pilot. He will take the helm of the French ship, the Soleil, during its perilous route through the canal. Having sailed all the world's seas like Ulysses, this long-distance captain has returned to his native port. He has ruled over the canal for 14 years. We don't have ships this big every day. It's a new ship, and I'm very proud to take it through the canal. One reason I accepted this post on the canal is because I remain in contact with the sea, which I love so much. Anastasios has no time to lose. The luxury French liner is already due on the other side of the canal. From the air, the canal is easy to miss. A simple straight line, six kilometers long. This narrow corridor links the waters of the Gulf of Corinth with the Aegean Sea. The waterway was once used by cargo vessels until merchant traffic dwindled. Nowadays, tourist ships have given the canal a second lease on life. The biggest, like the cruise ships, pay 6,000 euros per passage. Vessels cannot sail freely between the steep sides since each end of the canal is blocked by a rather unusual kind of bridge. Excuse me. Hello. The bridge is going to be lowered. Proceed. As the ships approach, the bridge gets out of the way by submerging. At a depth of 10 meters, the ships are just vague shadows. Have you got any fuel? Because we can't afford any. In 2014, some 11,000 vessels passed through the canal under the watchful eye of the barrier guards. Mutsos Tassos has been in charge of the bridge for 25 years. I never get tired of it. It's my whole life rather than a job. And the more ships that pass, the more lively the place is. All the ships have passed, I press this, and the bridge rises back up. Mutsos was born on the banks of the canal. The canal is our second home. My family's links with the canal began with my grandfather, who worked for many years on its construction. The Emperor Nero dreamt of cutting through the Isthmus of Corinth, but it was the French who finally accomplished this. Hampered by landslides, accidents and malaria, this Herculean task lasted 11 years. 
On the day of its inauguration in 1893, the first vessel through was something of a bumper car. It hit the sides seven times. Yanis, let's go, let's go faster. It's really very narrow. The width of the canal is exactly 24.6 meters. Anastasios Filis must guide the imposing Soleal through the canal. It's a challenge for us, because this ship is 20 meters. So that leaves only two meters on each side. It's going to be quite a tense crossing. So. Hello. A Frenchman, Etienne Garcia, is in charge of the Soleil. He's going through the canal for the tenth time, but for this brand new cruise liner, it's a first. During the trip, Captain Garcia swaps the helm for the microphone. Okay. Dear passengers, we have now taken on board three pilots, one of whom will be permanently at the helm, the other two on the wings to monitor the distance to the sides. We'll be entering in the canal in a few minutes. How do you feel when you hand the ship over to someone else? In general, I'm not very keen on doing that, but this is a rather special case. They know their territory, their canal, so I'm glad to go through with full confidence. There's nothing to worry about. From here on, I control the ship. The same ship has another behavior than uh, the previous. It depends on the current, on, on, the, on the winds, and so many, so many things. We have to now we have to let him steer because we're starting to go in. <laughs> Between four and a half and five, we are okay. All fine this side. better remain alert. It would be a bit of a shame to scratch this lovely ship. In places, the canal walls bear traces of color, a reminder of some ill-judged maneuvers. Why are they looking at us? They want to see the ship going through. They want to see if we'll get through, I think. I wanted the children to see it because they haven't done it. It's something you have to do once in your life. And it gets narrower. It doesn't look as though we'll go through. Halfway through, the navigable channel becomes even tighter. The canal is a fragile structure cut through clay.
There's a rock fall 100 meters ahead, on the right there. That happened last week. So for security reasons, we will have to slow down, you see. Give me four knots now. Four knots. You're at 1.5 meters. Excuse me. Uh, could you move up further, please? In fact, we've come a bit closer. We're obliged to maneuver. The pilot steers to the right to bring out the stem. And at the same time, to avoid coming any closer, he uses the fore propeller. We're in a very delicate situation here. It's not easy. We have to move out on one side to avoid the rocks. And on the other, not approach the opposite side too much. Fantastic. Now we're in the clear. You know, I've been through before with barely 80 centimeters on each side. Another two kilometers and the Solial will reach the bridge at the other end of the canal. Once the Solial is through, the canal is back in the hands of thrill seekers at the top of its 70 meter walls. Thanks to Sotiris Pavlou, the canal is used for a different profitable activity. Sotiris has created five jobs because demand is so strong for a leap into the void. This is a first for Tim, a young American tourist. You push the platform out with your head first, and second, keep your arms open during the jump. These two simple things, okay. all right? Only the 1%. It go in front of the platform and then goes back. Even but, less. Even but less this is less. not this man, yes? Yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure of that. <laughs> so, Tim, we are going to wait this boat, yes? Okay. Four or five minutes. Okay. This is one of the most amazing places to do the bungee jump because actually, first of all, you jump into the earth. It's a wonder of the world anyway. This view is amazing and this is the last thing in the mind of the jumper, you know? Yeah, Look at Tim, that what do you think? I think we should take that helicopter <laughs> up and do it up there. <laughs> Amazing boat, huh? Helicopter. Very nice. <laughs> Let's do this then. Five, four, three, two, one. Go, go, jump. Yeah. <laughs> Team, life is good, huh? <laughs> yeah! Oh, Very nice! You did it! Bravo, Tim. Yes! That was it's great! The, the yeah! <laughs> oh, man, it was incredible. It was incredible. Oh, what a rush. <laughs> Dear passengers, we're leaving the canal with some regret because I've had the honor today of being piloted by the best of the best, the boss of pilots. It has been an honor. Faristopoli, Captain, it was very nice. Thank you very much, Captain. Appreciate it. For Greek ships, we say always to the captains, Saint Nicholas always ahead you. Yes, yes, it's true. Because according to the Greeks, he's the protector of the seamen.
Dear passengers, we have now entered the Aegean Sea. We're going to continue on our route. I hope you enjoyed that. In the Cyclades, the Aegean Sea provides Greece with one of its crowning glories, the Santorini Archipelago. You know the day that I turned 18, folks said, why you're waiting? Hurry, grab one while you can. They said, take my advice, don't make me tell you twice. Better get yourself a man. Santorini is a volcanic island that has been broken into three parts since its crater was flooded during a huge eruption 4,000 years ago. This caldera now offers a unique panorama. Hanging from vertiginous cliffs is a picturesque paradise which attracts tourists from around the world. And as they walked away, she turned to me to say, Bed against yourself, oh man. This year, two million people visited the island. Tourists from ferries are joined by those on cruise ships, further increasing the number of visitors. It's a unique view, don't you think? Santorini has not suffered from the recession, and yet Yorgos Halaris is worried. He's a local politician, and he's afraid that the island will be drowned under the masses, and that in the end, tourists will look elsewhere. See all these people? And there are more arriving. It's a constant flow. This cruise ship is only stopping for four hours. On board are 3,200 passengers, for whom Santorini is a key destination on their cruise. They reach land via the constant toing and froing of shuttles. There are already enough people to block the streets. Imagine what it's like when there are four or five cruise ships. This is the problem on our island, right before our eyes. To reach the capital, Fira, tourists who want to avoid the queue for the cable car have another means of transport available. It's five euros. Yanis, load up, it's your go. And for the return trip, the queue has simply changed direction. How many stay to here at Sandorini? Two hours. We took the donkeys and we went to the town, the city center. Two hours. How can that be enough to visit Santorini? And you can see that they didn't buy anything. That shows that mass tourism is no good for anyone. Most of Santorini's people don't benefit from it. Far from the bustle of the capital, here is the little village of Oya, located on the northern tip of the island. This picture postcard village is one of Santorini's most cherished tourist spots. Until the 1980s, Oya was a collection of abandoned ruins. 
in 1956, a violent earthquake destroyed most of these troglodyte houses. Restored to their original form, Oya is now an architectural gem. Hey, how are you? What's up? I'll take it easy. Yorgos Halaris keeps a careful watch over this unique heritage. Hey, Yorgos. How you been? Fine. And you? Do you drink coffee in the morning? Vula Diduni is an architect. She supervises all the restoration work in the village. I was looking at some old photos. Do you remember how the house was before? I'm proud of everything that has been accomplished for my island over all these years. I think my husband is jealous because I love Oya as much as him. Maybe more than him. So he's a bit jealous. The renaissance of Oya started here. For the first time, Vula opens the door of her house to cameras. It's the first ruin that she restored. So, here is my house. It used to be the village oven. This was a baker's shop. Here was the big oven. You can see the construction with these red lava stones. This is a very old oven, maybe two or three hundred years old. That's why I bought this place, to save it. Twice a month, Yorgos and Vula inspect the village and identify anything that might detract from its visual harmony. This is a superb noble captain's house. It was destroyed during the earthquake. Only one room was destroyed. The rest is intact. We should be able to restore this house. In Oya, Yorgos has insisted that all the electric cables are buried and solar panels are banned. Today, one color stands out, this freshly painted yellow. This yellow, it's not very nice. If something doesn't go well, what we do is talk with those responsible, and we see what can be done to improve the postcard look. Because Oya and Santorini don't only belong to the people born here, or to the Greeks, it's a world treasure. Yorgos Halaris has arranged to meet us in the south of the island, at the foot of the lighthouse, one of the last ones still inhabited. With his son, Yorgos enjoys the last moments of the day. So, my son, are you enjoying the sunset? Look! It's nice and peaceful here. Top villages are thronged with visitors.
Once the spectacle is over, peace returns to Oya. There are no discotheques or noisy bars here. They're banned. That's part of the charm of Santorini, the Pearl of the Cyclades. Mm-hmm. 